All right, class, today we're going to go over some examples from the delta math assignment for finding inverses. So we're going to do some multi-step functions, uh, level 1, level 2, and level 3 inverses. And then we're going to do an example of identifying inverses graphically. So the first example is x to the power of 7 plus 3. We need to find an inverse. So the way that we have been doing in class was to use an OI chart. In an OI chart, what we're doing is we're listing the order of operations um, for our particular parent function or our uh, original function. So the first step is order of operations. We're raising to the power of 7. So we're raising to the power of 7. And the second operation is we're adding by 3. Right? So to find the inverse, what we're going to do is we're, we're going to reverse the order. And we're also going to undo, aka do the opposite, aka find an invert, uh, find an inverse operation of adding by three. Um, so the inverse of adding by three would be to subtract by three. And so the second operation will be in the reverse order. So the, the inverse of raising the power of seven will be to take the seventh root of something. So in our inverse aka f to the power of negative 1 of x. We start with an x. We subtract 3 first. And then we take the seventh root of the entire expression. And that is all. So in this problem, we need to choose the last one. Submit our answer. Yes, and we're done. Now, the way that Delta math explains how to do it is to switch the x and y. So I'll show you an example of why we do that. So the original function was f of x is x to the power of 7 plus 3. So what they do is they represent f of x with y. So this is just another way of doing this problem. So instead of writing as f of x, we write as y is equal to x to the power of 7 plus 3. And what they do is they switch the x and y. Now, you might be wondering, why do we do this? Um, the reason why we switch the x and y is, well, in order to find the inverse, what we're doing is the domain of one function becomes the range of the other function and vice versa, aka we switch the x and the y's. Now, keep in mind that that's going to be a problem later on, but let's for the sake of saying we want to find inverse, we switch the x and the y. All right? We got that. Now we solve for y. So what we do is first we subtract three from both sides because we need to undo adding three. So we subtract three from both sides. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the same fruit from both sides. So to undo that, we're going to take the sound fruit from both sides. Because when you do that, you see, since these two are inverses, they will cancel out. And you're going to get the sound fruit of x minus 3. Okay. So that's just another way of undoing this. You can use it an OI chart to help you formulate your thoughts in terms of orders of operation. So when you're finding the inverse of a particular function, you're undoing those operations, right? You can probably do it in your head, but I highly recommend using a chart or showing out your work like so. So let's go back. Let's do a level two now. Make a new whiteboard. So this one is a little more difficult because you have three operations here. So we can use the same process that we did before. We can make an OI chart. So PEMDAS says that you need to do the parentheses first. So inside the parentheses, you have the fourth root of x, then you divide by eight. Because the exponent has a higher precedence, what we're doing first is we're taking the fourth root of x. So after we take the fourth root, we divide by eight. So dividing by 8 is our next operation. 
And the last operation is raising to the power of 7. So when we find the inverse, we're undoing that process. So once again, the inverse of raising to the power of 7 is taking the sum fruit of whatever that is, which we always start with x. So we take the sum fruit of that number or that expression. The second operation is this operation, but we need to do the inverse of dividing by 8, which is the multiply by 8. And the third operation will be the inverse of taking the fourth fruit of something. So the inverse of taking the fourth fruit of an expression or a number is to raise it to the power of four. All right. So our, our inverse will be f to the power of negative one is equal to, we start with an x always. First operation is we're taking the sum fruit of x. Second operation is we're multiplying by 8, so we should put the 8 in front. Um, the reason why we don't want to put an 8 in the back is it looks slightly awkward, right? And sometimes it looks like the 8 is underneath the radicand, um, sorry, underneath the radical symbol. So we should put it in front. So 8 goes here. And the last step is to raise it to power 4. So we're raising all of it to power 4. So we need to put a parenthesis around all of it and raise it to power 4. So let's take a look at some of our possible answers here. Wow, they look all very, very similar. So we're looking for parentheses on that. Okay, so it's either this one or this one. The eight is in front, the sum fruit is there. So it looks like this one. This one's close, but the eight is inside, which is incorrect. Submit our answer. Yes, and there we go. All right, so use an OI chart to help you formulate, uh, formulate your order of operations, because when you're doing inverse, you're doing what some people refer to as reverse PEMDAS. You're, um, you're undoing the order, but you're also inverting the operations. So let's go back and let's do a level three now. We have f of x is three x to the power of seven plus 10 divided by four. Let me fix my seven real quick. So the order of operations. First, what we're doing is, remember this is in parentheses. So it should be x raised to the power of seven first. So we're raising to the power of seven. Next, we're multiplying by three because multiplication comes before the uh, addition. So now we add 10. And all of that was inside parentheses. So the last operation is to divide by four. All right, so the inverse, we reverse the order and invert the operation. So instead of dividing by four, you're multiplying by four. Number two would have been number three, set three from the previous function, um, except we're going to do the inverse of that, which is to subtract by 10. The third operation is, well, since the inverse of multiplying by three is division, so it's divided by three. Fix the divide symbol. And for number four, the fourth step, uh, the inverse of raising to the power of seven is to take the sum fruit. So the inverse would be let me move this out slightly. The inverse of that function would be start with an x, we multiply by 4, so 4 goes in front, we subtract 10 from 4x, then we divide all of this by 3, so put a division symbol, divide by 3, and we're taking the sum fruit of the entire expression, and so let's just see which one it is, uh, it looks like it's d, the last one, so we'll submit it, and there we go. That is our function. All right, so this is a level three problem. As you can see, an OI chart is very helpful because it allows you to just clearly understand the order of operations and the reverse order of operations 
to find inverse of our function, right? The way that delta map does it, once again, is they replace the f of x with a y, they switch the x and y, and they solve for y, which is also a legit way because you're doing exactly what you're doing here, right? To undo it, you need to multiply by four to both sides, subtract the 10, divide by three, and then take the same fruit, which is exactly what we're doing. It's just a nice way to organize your thoughts. All right. Um, so let's do another example here. New problem. Mm, very similar. All right. I do like this problem. This problem has a fraction. So let's make a new whiteboard. So our function is f of x is 8x to the power 1 fifth plus 4 raised to the power of 7. So let's make an OI chart to find the inverse. Parentheses comes first. So we look inside here. Um, as you can see, the x is connected to the 1 fifth and it's connected to the 8. However, because one fifth is an exponent, we do that first. So what we're doing is we're raising to the power one fifth. All right, next, what we're doing is we're multiplying by eight. Step three, after we multiply by eight, we add four. And for step four, the last step is um, we're gonna raise it to the power of seven. So for step one of the inverse, we're going to undo raising to the power of seven, which is to take the seventh root. Right, so that was that. Step two would have been separate from the previous function. So instead of adding by four, we're going to subtract by four. Step three, uh, instead of multiplying by eight, we divide by eight. So this one is slightly tricky. So if you're raising to the power of one fifth, the inverse of that is to raise it to the power of the reciprocal of one fifth. So if we have a fraction to reciprocate it, we're switching the order, so it'll be five over one. But five over one is just five. So our inverse would be x. First off, we take the seventh root. Then we subtract 4. So remember, the minus 4 goes outside. Don't put it underneath your radical symbol. Then we divide by 8. So let's make a fraction. Put it all over 8. And then we take the fifth root of all of it. And we are done. So let's take a look. It looks like it's the first one. So we can click on that. Submit it. And there we go. Um, and once again, the way that delta math does it is it's pretty complicated in the sense that you're switching to x and y and you're undoing these processes or these processes, um, right? You're undoing it by first taking the seven fruit, subtracting the four, dividing the eight, and raising to the power of five, which should also yield the same answer as well, right? So an OI chart is really helpful. Um, so do use that. Um, and next year when you guys go to pre-calculus, um, you will have a chance to solve it this way. Because sometimes the OI, OI chart doesn't work, especially when you have two variables. If like you had two axes, you, you wouldn't be able to use an OI chart. Or if you have a, like a weird quadratic and you need to complete the square. All right? So uh, let's do the very last one which is identifying inverses graphically. So a common theme with inverses is we're undoing, right? Uh, you're plugging in a value, you output some number, and the inverse un undoes it, right? So if you're given a series of points from a graph, what you need to do is find those points, you have an order pair, and you're going to switch the order pair. So you're gonna switch the X and the Y. 
So I'll give you some examples. Let's say we have this parabola, right? This parabola looks really, really cool. Um, let's find a vertex, which is right here. It's at negative one, negative five. So I'm gonna make a table. This is f of x. We'll call it this function f of x. We don't have a name for it. So there is a point at negative one, negative five. Um, there's another point here at zero, negative four. There's also a point at zero, negative six. Um, let's see. Number one, so one doesn't hit a nice point. Cree hits a pretty nice point. So at Cree, it's gonna be at negative Cree. Um, also, Cree also gives you negative seven. One of the issues that you might see is that this is not a function. This graph is not a function because it doesn't pass what we call the vertical line test. So when you you have an x value at one, it gives you some number, or if you take a look at our table, when x is three, it gives you negative three, but it also gives you negative seven. So whenever this occurs, this is not a function. Um, so we'll just call it a graph, right? So this is not a function. So when we graph the inverse, we call that the inverse relation, not necessarily uh, inverse function. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. So it's safer to call it an inverse relation. All right, so even though we represent like this, we're graphing the inverse function. Let's keep in mind that the proper term is an inverse relation. All right, so we reverse the order. So instead of negative one, negative five, the order pair will be at negative five, negative one. It will be at negative four, zero, negative six, zero, negative three, three, and negative seven, positive three as well. So let's click on those dots. Um, negative five, negative one is here. Negative four, zero is here. Negative six, zero is here. Negative three, positive three is here. Negative seven positive three is here, right? So these two, so when you ever you have a function or let, let's just call it a, a graph, whenever you have a graph to graph its inverse relation, it's always going to be symmetric about the line y is equal to x. This is a, what we call the line of symmetry. So this graph would be symmetrical over this line, right? So we'll submit our answer, and there we have it. So what you want to do is find a series of original points from your function, and we need to find inverse points. So you switch the order of the x and the y values. 